Now, I'm not going to tell you that the Reverend Jesse Jackson's a better player than Ed Garvey. But one year later, Ed Garvey came spinning out of Burlington, Wisconsin, and he went down to Mississippi as a freedom rider, and he got his head bashed. That's why he's still crazy. But I will tell you, yeah, Garvey's saying back here, you get credibility just for getting banged around a little bit. But I will tell you, I will tell you that there's never been, in my mind, a better combination than Ed Garvey and Jesse Jackson, unless you could throw Paul Wellstone into the mix. But we're going to celebrate the Reverend Jesse Jackson today because he marched with Dr. King, because he was with Dr. King on the night that the Reverend Dr. King was assassinated. And he stood up and he marched out of that horrible moment as a committed organizer. He went into our urban areas and he organized. And then when we had a family farm crisis, he said this, this civil rights movement isn't just about African Americans, it's about all Americans. And he went out and stood with family farmers in states like Wisconsin. He marched with gays and lesbians, not in 2005 or 2006, but back in the 1980s, when no other major politician, when no presidential candidate would go to gay and lesbian rights marches, he went and marched. He ran for president of the United States of America. And when he got to that Democratic National Convention in Atlanta, he said, yes, we will debate about economic and social justice. Yes, we will debate about Central America. And we will debate about the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people to a homeland. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, the Reverend Jesse Jackson has always put our issues fighting Bob LaFollette's issues at the forefront of the agenda. And that is why we honor him today with the Lifetime Achievement Award from FightingBob.com and Fighting Bob Fest. And I will read one line at the start of it from Robert M. LaFollette. America is not made, but is in the making. There is an unending struggle to make and keep government representative. Mere passive citizenship is not enough. Men must be aggressive for what is right if government is to be saved from those who are aggressive for what is wrong. For 50 years, one man has led us as we have struggled for what is right. Please welcome the Reverend Jesse Jackson. In the war now. In the war now. In the war now. Jobs now. Jobs. Peace. Save family farmers. Stop the banksters. Fight for peace. Keep hope. Keep hope alive. Let me hear you scream. <laughs> Let me thanks my friend and brother Nichols for such a kind and generous introduction and for our kinship across the years. The brother Ed Garvey, who is our brother beloved, who means so much to all of us, we must never take Ed Garvey for granted. People like Ed don't come in bunches like grapes. They're rare. 
On your feet, show your love for Ed Garvey. Show your love. Show your appreciation. Show your love. Show your appreciation. I want us, because today has a special meeting for our nation in the world with the terror attack 9-11. So many lives lost, families injured, memories are so painful. Let us stand and join hands, bow our heads in prayer. Today, for lives lost, hurt, and injured families, we pray today. I ask you to have mercy on us, to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for wars, to kill the innocent and lift some in the main and call collateral damage. We give the arrogance of wars of choice and living above a royal court of justice. We thank you for those sons and daughters of ours who sacrificed their lives and their limbs, and now they are home, homeless, jobless, and too often hopeless. The good news is you will see us through. There's nothing too hard for you. We fall down some time. We get back up again, again and again, because your mercy is boundless and everlasting, and your grace is sufficient. So bless these who gather here today, and bless our nation. At the end, we fight together for a world of peace and shared security. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. In so many ways today, given our historic struggles, this is midday in our politics and midnight in our economy. Let us not forget in our lifetime, for the most part, we did not always have the right to fight for the right. We didn't always have the right to vote, and yet we espoused and argued that we were a democracy, minus women, 18 year olds, blacks, and Latinos. We went to Selma to vote in 1965 in that struggle, portrayed in the media as a voting rights act blacks. But lest we forget in Selman 65, white women couldn't serve on juries. Farmers who couldn't afford poll taxes could not vote either. And so we all affirm our right to vote. August 1970, if 18 year olds can serve in Vietnam, they also can use their right to vote. We won that battle. 1971, a law case. Students have the right to vote on campuses where they attend school. If there's something called easy access, why should you be in school in Madison have to go to Chicago or Milwaukee as it were to vote? So whole dormitories can become precincts. We made the case in 1975 that America is not about the English only. The great American invitations give me your tired. You pull your huddle masters who yearn to breathe free, not bound by language or religion or race or gender. So bilingual voting in 1975. People like Jim Hightower and Ed Garber kept arguing the case, build a bigger tent. See America through a door and not through a keyhole. And thus hearing heeding that call, we ran for the Democratic nomination in 84. And we found that in our coming to Wisconsin and coming to fight with, for the meat cutters, coming to keep the plant, the auto plants open, and we touched something deep that went beyond the limits of race and gender. Because somebody found out that when it's real dark, and they close your plant and take your jobs away, they turn the lights out. We all look amazing assembly in the dark. 
The issue, therefore, was not so much about black and white as it was about wrong and right and dark and light. It was not so much about complexion as it was about direction, for the our values, for the our priorities. We ran a magnificent campaign that season, just learning in many ways to process it, testing the limits of the culture of our nation. But one impact was we began the Senate in 1986. We went forward again in 1988. At that time we fought for something called proportionality. The threshold was 40% to be a delegate on the one hand and one that took all. So if one person got 49.9, one got 50.1, they got 100, which was bad math. We fought to change that mathematical arrangement. We, redu we, we reduced the threshold to 15% to be a delegate, trying to democratize democracy. We won proportionality, and we got in that campaign 1,220 delegates without a budget. We kept making the case America must be built bottom up and not, and not top down. We began to see daylight in what was to be a great American promise. In 2008, President Barack Obama ran for the presidency. And based upon that struggle in a greater measure, led by people like Jim Hightower and people uh, like uh, Ed Garvey, uh, people who believe, like Paul Wellstone, that we could change America if we, if we turn to each other, not on each other. And so in 2008, President uh, Senator Clinton, she won Texas by a small margin. She won Ohio by a small margin, California by a small margin. Because of proportionality, she did not get the winner take all. And so we changed the math and we changed the rules. And the result is evident. When we change, when we democratize democracy, we can all win. Why when University of Wisconsin plays Illinois, as it were, on the football field? And we can choose uniform color over skin color. What makes that arena where we can come based upon geography and based upon uniform color, what makes the football, basketball court, baseball field, what makes the, the track meet, what makes those games allow us to live together and the winner wins with grace, the loser loses with dignity. What about the athletic model that works for us. Because whenever the playing field is even and the rules are public, the goals are clear, referee is fair, we can make it. Say so whenever, repeat whenever, whenever the playing field is even and the rules are public and the goals are clear and the referee is fair, we can all make it. In some sense, we want to democratize our economy in the same way. You play against banksters, the field is not even. These banksters, without oversight from congressional leaders, if today in that same football game, if the referee does not show up, but what's to be a game becomes a brawl. There's no arbiter of justice. There's no one who can call foul or fair play. And what happened to us is that the banksters were put on their payrolls, Congress people. They were either seeking to get a donation on Wall Street or looking to be a consultant when their congressional days were over. And so when the oversight did not oversee and the banks had then foreclosed on our homes and churches, and run up student loans. The banks is without fair lending laws and fair housing laws. The banks without EEOC uh, contract and plastic, they drove us in the hole. And in that ditch, we bailed them out. Not linked to reinvestment. Not linked to home loans. Thus today, Wall Street rejoices in a very scandalous way, really. While home foreclosures are rising, we deserve better. Protect us from the banksters.
Every city or small town I visit, we see a combination of plants closing and jobs leaving. Drugs and guns are coming because we've globalized capital without globalizing human rights, workers' rights, women's rights, children's rights, environmental security. It's time for a change. Let's democratize the economy as we have our politics. Every city I visit, plants closing. Now USAGM, 60% owned by U.S. government, 20% by Canadian government, and 20 by UAW. Number one market for Buick is China. And so we subsidize them to take away jobs. It's time for a change. We deserve an even playing field. We can win when the rules are fair. <laughs> See a pattern of foreclosing homes. And then there's a glut of homes on the market that we cannot afford. Homes beyond our reach. So if homes are foreclosed, public housing cut back, cut public transportation, raise fares, cut service layoff workers. These public transportation, these are green jobs. Green job is not just the windmill. It's not just a solar panel that has its place, but the green job starts with the bus driver. 50 folk on the bus as opposed to 50 cars is a green job. In the name of change, we are laying off transit workers and raising bus fares. On welfare, it's illegal to own a car. So we cannot afford public transportation. You cannot own a car. You can't get welfare to work. It's time for a change, fundamental in direction. And so you foreclose public housing. Why? Because they make more money off of foreclosure than they do off of modification. They make money off originating the loan. They make money off of securitization, off of private mortgage insurance. We cannot subsidize bankers and leave people homeless in the streets of America. It's time for a fundamental change. Banks bail out. No one on Wall Street lost their job. They get 0% interest and charge students 7%. They're making a fee off of free money. It's time for a change. And today, we need a stimulus bottom up. A student loan debt forgiveness plan to put us back to work. Let students be free. It doesn't make sense to have a guaranteed loan and without a guaranteed job. So it's time for a change. How many of you have a student loan debt? Raise your hand. Raise your hand real high. Stand for a student loan debt. Why should banks get 0% interest money and charge you a fee for free money? We must corral, corral the banksters, salvage our students, salvage our homes, put America back to work bottom up. It's time for a change. Today, Ed, there is a contest for the soul of our nation. As in, who are we? Are we the nation with the great invitation? Give me, you're tired, you're poor, you're huddled masses. Are we the nation where fewer and fewer control more and more, and the masses have less and less? Uh, who are we? Are we the nation of 
English are only other, a nation of many languages and many cultures. I mean, English is a great language, but Jesus did not speak English. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. Amen. It's not about language, it's about message. Say many languages. Say many languages. Many languages. Many races. Many faces. From many places. E pluribus unum. Of the many, we are one. The oneness makes America great. Put your hands together like you mean that. There is a contest for the soul of our nation. Some real attempt to break our spirits. Shall we go forward by hope against the odds? A backwards by fear. We make mistakes sometimes, slip up sometimes, but we get back up again because the ground is no place for a champion. There's some idea that we will lose the Congress this year, assuming we don't fight back, but we will fight back. 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 I mean, given the price we pay for the right to vote, for family farmers who couldn't pay poll taxes, we got for them the right to vote. For 18 year olds, the right to vote. For women, the right to vote. For blacks and Latinos, the right to vote. The martyrdom of Swerna Goodman Cheney, two Jews and a black, the right to vote. Met Gabbers for the right to vote. Mandela and Jill, 27 years for the right to vote. We must use that vote and honor that legacy. Say honor that legacy. Use that vote. Use that vote. We will fight back. We will fight back. We will win. We will win. We will win. Yes, we can. Yes, we will. Yes, we must. Yes, we can. Yes, we will. Yes, you must. Don't let anybody break your spirit. Today our pain is great. And your champions play with pain. We want to end the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The only those who fight back can win that war. We know the war in Iraq was a war of choice and a bad choice. A dangerous, explicit, bloody choice. And we're on our way out. But look at the plan for what remains. For, they, for the Iraqis, it's 50,000 troops come home. And those troops who come home, see those troops who come home, deserve a job, an income. Those troops who come home, must have moratorium on foreclosures of their homes. Those troops who come home, children should have student loan, debt forgiveness. Troops who come home should have lifetime counseling and medical care. Honor our troops with substance. Honor them, say honor them with substance. Save their houses, save their jobs, save their children. Give them medical care. Put your hands together. Save our troops with substance. Why are 50,000 troops in, in Iraq today? They are there to oversee the rebuilding of Iraq. They're there to make secure private contractors, to, to build roads. Bridges, sewers, hospitals, health care. We must demand the same agenda for Milwaukee and Chicago and South County. We want jobs and health care and housing and jobs. We want for America what we provide for Iraq and Afghanistan. Say jobs now. Health care now. Decent houses now. Live a wage now.
comprehensive health care, single payer, now, jobs, now. Put your hand together like you mean it. Lastly, how do we measure our characters? We seek to become a better nation. First of all, don't give up the ground that we've taken through much struggle. You cannot rationalize not voting. You cannot do less than your best and expect to get best of what you deserve. So we must use our vote. Use our marching feet. And Bill say, use our vote. Use our marching feet. Build coalition. If we have the faith, God has the power. If we have the faith, God has the power. It gets dark sometime. It gets dark sometime. It gets dark sometime. But hold on. Because the morning comes. It's morning time. It's morning time. Fight back. It's morning time. Actually, I was in Detroit working last with UAW and SEIU in March for jobs and justice and peace. In Detroit, there are 90,000 vacant lots of abandoned houses because banks are still having more benefits from foreclosures than they are from modifications. But the other side, why can't those unemployed people in Detroit have apprenticeship training to become landscapers, to weatherize homes, to replace boards and window panes? Why can't they learn to build and not self-destruct? Give them a way out. In the trunk, not one national grocery chain store, not one national retailer store in the trunk. We must rebuild American cities. The fact is, because the spirits are broken, they voted 11.8% three weeks ago. Because of that, Republicans won the state by 480,000 votes. Say no one, repeat no one, has earned the right to do less than your best. Memphis voted 11%. Republicans took back Shelby County. My school in Greensboro, North Carolina, last year when President Barack ran, 5,000 voted, and then last year 200 voted. They lost a progressive mayor by 800 votes. Say nobody has earned the right to do less than their best. So today we look at the crisis of poverty. 50 million Americans are food insecure. 40 million are in poverty. 30 million don't have a job. The rich are getting more and more. The mass are getting less and less. But then we fight back again. It's time to march again. Don't complain, march. Don't complain, vote. Speak above your pain. It's time for the change we seek. We are the change that we see. We are the change we seek. If we have the faith, God has the power. Women can vote because they fought back. Workers can organize because they fought back. 18 year olds can vote because they fought back. Blacks can vote because we fought back. Latinos can vote because we fight back. When we fight back, good things always come our way. You stand tall today, and you keep marching, and you keep voting, and don't let them make you turn on each other. Don't retreat into alcohol or drugs. Don't turn on your wife with some domestic violence and your frustration. Love one another as you have been loved by the Lord himself. Embrace your children. Raise your values high. Hold your head high. And keep dreaming. Dream above your predicament. Sometimes when the whole dream of a new day, of hope, of new possibility. If we dream and fight back, when the votes come in in Wisconsin, you'll be in the winner's circle. Because you didn't surrender. You do not lose because the wall is deep. 
You lose because you stop kicking. You don't stop kicking. You keep flapping your arms. Say, we, we will not drown. We will not drown. We'll fight back. We'll drown. We'll fight. We'll fight back. We'll fight back. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? No good thing. No good thing. When we withheld from those to love the Lord and call it according to his purpose. When we fight for health care, we're doing the Lord's work. We fight for senior security, we're doing the Lord's work. We fight to educate our children, we're doing the Lord's work. We fight to end the war, we're doing the Lord's work. Do the right thing. We fight back and do the right thing. Victory will come our way. Say, I am somebody. I am somebody. I am God's child. Bring the troops home now. Bring the troops home now. In the war now. Reinvest in America. Put America back to work. Stand tall now. Heads up. Joy will return. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. I love you. Put your hands together. I love you very much. Thank you. Say I am somebody. I will vote. My vote will make a difference. Far whatever. Back was never. Far whatever. Back was never. Far whatever. Back was never. Keep hope alive. I want y'all to do something for me kind of special if you don't mind. Um, take your seat for a moment. If you intend to vote this November. You may have said that I'm not going to vote. It doesn't matter. It does matter. If the opposition wins, they take back the health care bill. If they win, they want to privatize Social Security. If they win, they want to give the richest more tax cuts. You cannot afford to not vote. If you will vote this November, stand and come forward. If you will vote, stand and come forward. Come on down. Say, so I will vote. I will vote. Come on down. Come on down. Say, so I will vote. I will register and vote at the same time. Come on, I will vote. I will volunteer. Door to door. House to house. Church to church. Farm to farm. I will vote. Come on down. I will vote. I will vote. Find gold. Now put your hand together. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I want some voters down here. I want some boulders. Come on up here. I want some boulders. Come on down. Revive your spirit. So revive my spirit. Renew my faith. I will vote. I will vote. I will vote. The morning comes. The morning comes. The sun is out. No more run. The sun is out. Come on down here. Come on down here. We need some volunteers. Some volunteers. Come on down. And it's, it's not just enough that you can vote on the same day. We need somebody. We need some people who will work. We can say so we can win. So we can win Wisconsin now. We can win Michigan now. We need to. We can. We must. We need to. We can. We must. Outwork them. Outwork them. Be more determined. Get up earlier. Work harder and longer. And fight back. Fight back. Fight back. Fight back. Down with the banksters. Up with the people. Down with the banksters. Up with the people. Peace. Now. In the war. Now. In the war. Now. Jobs. Now. Let them hear you. Jobs. Jobs. Jobs, jobs, let me hear you scream. Love you guys, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you.